DT the kid. Coming the coach, Captain Pilot, shooter, hitter, rider, driver, goon, goblin, pusher, problem, A1, certified, solid, penalty, C, striker, alley, how would it hell, hot boxer, autopilot, for a play flight, bitch, I'm gliding, sliding, smiling, cause the critics say get him, I got him, green light, red beam, here, shot him. While DNA tests can offer insights into our genetic makeup. Wait a damn minute. <laughs> Wait a damn. <laughs> they are inherently limited by the data sets they use. DNA tests are often seen as the gold standard for uncovering our past. <laughs> However, they are fundamentally. <laughs> Butterfly in the sky, I can go twice as high, take a look, it's in a book, a reading rainbow. Limited by the populations they compare us to, these tests skew heavily towards the groups they best understand, typically over-representing. Huh? We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. The European and African samples not the vastly underrepresented American Indian samples or indigenous peoples F swear. Look at it this way. Think of how stupid the average person is and then realize half of them are stupider than that. <laughs> and it doesn't take you very long to spot one of them, does it? Take you about eight seconds. You'll be listening to some guy. You see, this guy is fucking stupid. <laughs> This article doesn't talk about the underrepresentation of Aboriginal genetic markers or overrepresentation of European and African samples, nor does it refer to flawed reference populations. So where did you get this source and why are you using this source? This article talks about the business of genetic ancestry testing, also the effects of commercialization, the impact of recreational genetics, and a little bit of other things inside of that. However, it never stated what you argued in your first round, in your first few slides. And you're being a little bit disingenuous as it pertains to the information that is written in this 2007 publication. So, next slide. So imagine you're curious about your family's past. Say, hold up, wait a minute. Something ain't right. Where they came from, who your ancestors were, its journey. Many of us had want to take the test, but now it seems technology can only open that door so you turn to genetic ancestry testing for free. <laughs> For a fee, not free. I'm sorry for that. The fee is ranging from 80 bucks to 700 bucks, depending on which company you use. However, while these tests can offer a fun and interesting experience, they come with flaws. It is heavily skewed towards some populations and lacking for others. I have all the evidence. For instance, there's no clear connection between your DNA and your racial or ethnic affiliation. Some people are really fucking stupid. Present day patterns of re uh, residents are not identical to what existed in the past. And each test examines less than 1% of your DNA. It's 1% um, of that 1% that they're testing. 
love of God! For the love of God! Please! Damn! Damn! Holds the key to understanding the fundamental principles of heredity, evolution, and the diversity of living organisms on Earth. Since its discovery in the mid-20th century, scientists have embarked on a journey to unravel the mysteries encoded within the structure and function of DNA, revealing insights that have revolutionized our understanding of biology, medicine, and biotechnology. By delving into the intricacies of DNA, we can uncover the secrets of its molecular architecture, genetic code, and profound implications for life. Since human beings are 99.9% .9 the same, they test the difference. That 0.1% difference is what makes you uniquely you. So, uh, KY Jelly the Lies book is a real trip. Like, seriously, you dive in hopping for some solid info on DNA and stuff, but then, bam, you're hit with all this filler sentences and chapters. It's like he's having, um, uh, giving a, a rant in uh, pitch sales for you buying into these DNA companies. Bro, what are you talking about, man? And what really the science is trying to explain in its merits, what's up with that, right? <laughs> Are you serious? Does the price tag really tell us how good the test is? Or is he low-key trying to sell us something? This leaves readers puzzled about the true focus of his argument. Are we exploring the science of DNA testing or are we being guided through a marketplace? What the hell are you talking about? Who are you talking to? What the hell does this have to do with anything? Tell me what's happening! And don't even get me started on the writing itself. It's a mess. We have run-on sentences we, uh, where words are just mashed together, there's no spaces. He doesn't proofread. There's punctuation errors flying everywhere, and it shouldn't be uh, um, uh, typos in the thing. It's like he skipped grammar class in school. What? He also doesn't directly cite sources to his claims. For example, he likes to credit information to well-known YouTube scholars, or uh, he doesn't really mention their names because he could be slandered, uh, sued for slander and libel, right? So plus, the way he talks about people who don't agree with his ideology claiming we're pretendians or wabos, he doesn't explain <laughs> or even bother bother to tell us what does wabo means. Um, is that not just unprofessional? It's disrespectful, by the way. This guy wants to take we he wants us to take him seriously, but uh, how come we uh, can respect Dark man <laughs> Brycey oh Brycey <laughs> See another <laughs> See another <laughs> Billy 
Billy Pimpini. <laughs> Billy Pimpini. <laughs> what he's saying when he can't show little respect for himself. He even admits this in his book that he has self hatred towards Africans. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Honestly, with all these issues, it's hard to see him as a credible source. I mean, if you're trying to make a point, at least do it with some class and decent spell check, right? Stop. So what is a wabo? We did our due diligence and looked up what wabo means. It's a god in Lakota. That's the Wakanda god. He's the rabbit god. He also exists in the form of a buffalo, or albino buffalo, or a panther. So it's mighty disingenuous not to do your due diligence on where you're getting your slurs from because a lot of these people compromise themselves and go sell out to these Native Americans uh, thinking this fun and games and we're culture vulturing over them, but they're really doing all this trying to negate you from claiming your Indianness. Stop the press. Who is that? So limitations of DNA ancestry tests such as inherit bias, convert evolution, um, convergent evolution, recombination, and genetic drift creates a distorted lens through which we view ancestry, leading to misclassifications and contradictions in the very results we rely upon. Hell no, to the no, no, no. Hell to the no, hell to the no, to the no, 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 no. Hell no, no, to the no, no. Moving beyond genetics to history, we find that the continuous homogenization clumping together of Black Americans with Africans has led to the uh, neglect of the rich cultural and uh, historical contributions of American Indians within the community. <laughs> <laughs> this erasure isn't just accidental. It's a part of a broader colonial and racist paradigm that seeks to rewrite histories and identities. Well, you all are just really tickled by that, aren't you? You try walking in those shoes. Hey, first of all. I'm playing a clip from Hank T. Grilly telling us what DNA t uh, is really about. Figures like Henry Louis Gates and Rick Kittles have popularized the simplified narrative that DNA testing is the definitive means of tracing African ancestry. Yet even they acknowledge that these tests are flawed. They often overlook the complex ethno-historical narratives that include American Indian roots. <laughs> Result is
is because of the simplified African diaspora narrative is easier to sell to people that's just business. This bias serves specific socio-political agendas and commercial interests rather than a pursuit of historical truth. Scores back on that placement test. Who cares? I fought three times before I got in. Long as you in the program, they'll hit you through. Maybe not with a degree, but they're gonna keep you out. Just don't do nothing embarrassing. They can't kill you for it. Hell, they even give Alvin here copies of his tests in advance. So them for a hundred bucks a pop to people in the class. Of course, he yeah. still gotta have somebody read them for him. Yeah, go ahead. Um. Like, All right, there you go. Now you're back at it. Now I'm gonna resume your time when you start speaking. Go ahead. You can run that back if you need to. All right. And then businesses often don't go around telling you how weak their product is. <laughs> This is Hank Greeley. He says, I'm a Stanford law professor. I work on ethical, legal, and social issues in biosciences. Let's go down, okay? He responded to me because I asked him, I said, um, is DNA testing a, a scam? Is it a hoax? Is it not real? Or does it just have limitations? And he said, wow. The 60 Minutes segment I did about was in 2008. Didn't know that was still alive. Short answer, both then and even more now. It can be done, but it still has major limitations. So for one, DNA testing can be done. As a way of finding, confirming fairly close genetic relatives out to second cousins say, it's quite good. As a way of telling your ethnic roots, it's okay. It's good at telling you if you have ancestry from some of the major continental groups, Europe, East Asia, the Americas, Sub-Saharan Africa. Now you see now, you done fucked up, you know, I told you. I see what I'm saying. I, no, I... It's pretty good at telling you how much DNA you inherited from there, but not wonderful. If it tells you you are 50% European, your family tree would probably show you as having somewhere between 35 to 65%, somewhere around there. But I don't have data to support a real range of your ancestors from there. If it says you are 10% East Asian, your family tree would probably show you with somewhere between 0 to 20% of your ancestors from there. If it says you are 50% Scottish or Japanese or Ashkenazi, you are probably 20 to 80% from that ancestry. The narrower the population, the less accurate. So every time Rick Kittles tell you guys, Hank Greeley is concerned that the science isn't really there yet for, for you to be giving them the name of a tribe. I think for most companies, I, I would be concerned too. But what about your own company? We, we have he the didn't largest... exclude you. <laughs> he included you. But we have the largest um, uh, set of uh, sequences from Africa. So yeah, with, that, you... with that, we're able to provide some level of probability in terms of frequency. I have the largest database with African people. Over 30,000 lineages. If it says you are 5% Swedish, you may as well have 15% of your ancestry Swedish or 0%. And maybe instead have some Norwegian or Danish or Icelandic, but maybe not. I have done, I had mine done by two firms. 
Family Tree DNA for that 60 Minutes show that they did not mention it because it wasn't interesting and by Ancestry. All right? So he had a DNA test done. Uh-oh. They all agree I'm overwhelmingly European in Ancestry, anywhere from 100 to 95%, depending on the company and the time of the assessment. But very dramatically about the percentages of Irish, Scottish, English, Germany, and my ancestry, while throwing in various small percentages of Swedish, Spanish, Southern Europe, Eastern Europe, Jewish, or Middle Eastern, none of them above 10%, and none of them worth much credence. And every year or so, companies change its assessment. My miscellaneous and one of them from Spain to Sweden. Of course, one upgrade, but it was about 5%, so I didn't put any weight on it, okay? If you have non-European ancestry, the details are going to be even worse, okay? And this is why he's going to break down to you everything Rick Kittles was saying from the jump. The firms have a lot of customers with German or French or English ancestry so they can distinguish somewhat between those European subpopulations. But they have very few customers from Native Americans, South Asians, non-Han East Asians, Sub-Saharan Africans. See that? If they tell you that your ancestry is Cherokee, it might well be Crete or Hopi. If they tell you your ancestry is Korean, it might well be Japanese or Chinese. If they tell you your ancestry is Zulu, it could be Yoruba or Kikuyu. The smaller their customer base, let me repeat that again. The smaller their customer base, the worse their narrow assessments get. I hope this was helpful. So, when you go to places like um, Ancestry and 23andMe, that's the wrong test. Uh, East African. West African. No, see, that's the wrong test. Which one you took? Yeah. Like, you got the... You, exactly. took, you took Ancestry. Yeah, 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 yeah. I took a African Ancestry. You want to go to African Ancestry so you can get your African Ancestry. So, if you know where you originate from, you know you're not from America. You know that you came from Africa because those Africans in the, on that continent share the same genetic makeup as you. So you know you're not a native. You know you wasn't already here. And Hank Greeley, the man you love to use, said that DNA can be done. We don't oversell. I mean, we just say, look, we provide a service. If you're interested in exploring a tiny bit of your DNA and trace its ancestry, we can do that. When you say it's a tiny little amount, it's less than 0.1%. Out, 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 it's less than 0.1%. That's pretty teeny. Yeah, but... <laughs> I don't want to hear a sound! Not a sound! When the exercise will come on, you will stand, you will stand quietly, you will pay attention. Any questions? No, sir. Now stand up and keep your mouth shut! Stand up! All right, next slide. Oh, we can get into that, um, into another. So, um, Here's a guy that, um... Some people are really fucking stupid. 
he had a, a whole video that came out on CNN last year for Juneteenth. So I'm going to read over it, and I met the scientists at this building. So... <laughs> Stop the cap. <laughs> Stop the cap right now. Stop the cap. No bullshit, bro. Now, we, let's consider genealogy and oral traditions unlike DNA tests, which provide a generalized view. Many black American families have detailed genealogical records and oral history tracing their roots directly to American Indian tribes. Hey, boy, ain't no fucking way, boy. Boy, ain't no 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 fucking way, boy. These personal and detailed stories offer more nuanced understandings of ancestry, often missing from the scientific de uh, debate. You will witness in this video aired on Juneteenth 2023 last year a real story about CNN news anchor who finds out that he's American Indian through genealogical records, not DNA testing. Stop the cap. <laughs> Stop the cap right now. Stop the cap. No bullshit, bro. This is a classic example of evidence that backs up what Grandma said. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Now to show off the expanse and residence of the museum's Center for Family History, researchers traced my genealogy. Now listen, as a black man with deep roots in the American South, I thought I knew where my story was headed. I was very wrong. Nick. You remember that shit I gave you last week, nigga? It's nothing, nigga. It's nothing. It's nothing, nigga. Nigga, it's nothing. This shit right here, nigga. This shit right here, nigga. Very few moments in my career have ever brought me to this. This is, oh, uh, man. It happened at the International African American Museum in Charleston, South Carolina. Is Dr. Shelley Murphy on the laptop. I'm in her. Huh? She's joining us from the University of Virginia. This is a tree, just a snapshot of your tree, and I'm following your maternal line. For those of you who conflate genealogy with DNA testing, confusing the two, here are, is a snapshot of what a genealogical research actually is, which is the process of using historical records to find information about people and family, including vital records, such as birth, death, and marriage certificates, census records, newspapers, uh, probate records, periodicals, land deeds, and so forth. How could you be so stupid, huh? Would you tell me how you could be so goddamn stupid? It's crucial to understand that DNA is just one tool, one that is imperfect and incomplete. Our family story support by detailed records often tell us more about our roots than DNA tests ever could. Huh? We have to go back more than 300 years to my great, 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 great grandmother, Mary. She arrived on a ship in Northumberland County, Virginia in 1712 before America was America. Her granddaughter, my eight times great grandmother. Yeah. So hard living this life.
is life, a constant struggle each and every day. Some wonder why I'd rather die than to continue living this way. Many are blind and cannot find the truth of no one seems to really know But I won't accept That this is how it's gonna be Therefore you got to let me and my people go Cause I wanna be free Completely free Lord won't you please come and save me I wanna be free Bess was with her. That's according to this centuries-old deposition that Dr. Murphy's team uncovered. Why a deposition? We'll learn that a little later. And Bess at the time was about 13 years old. Witnesses apparently said they looked like they were Indians. Researchers believe that Mary and Bess were actually Matapani, like these people of that region of Virginia. Red <laughs> love. years in DNA and expect accuracy, but you can go back that far and even further back with paper trail. <laughs> you serious? What this CNN report found out that they were able to trace his roots to America, predating the United States, not an African kingdom or province. What the hell are you talking about? Who are you talking to? What the hell does this have to do with anything? Tell me what's happening! <laughs> It's clear that Ling Ling is lying because the Matapa tribe later on in the 18th and 19th century were mixing with other, other ethnic groups. And this is what would make them lose their status and being recognized as a federally recognized tribe. And as you can see, they were even reclassified as black. And there was a reason for that because of all that mixing that they were doing. Mm-hmm. Right. So why is he sitting over here lying about a maternal side? Not a paternal side, a maternal side. This proves that oral tradition that many of us rely on, in other words, what Grandma said, is actually the truth. <laughs> <laughs> you serious? Not a lie. The 
reality is that these personal and detailed stories offer a more nuanced understanding of ancestry, often missing from the scientific debate. These narratives reveal our connections to this land and predate the transatlantic slave trade theory. Yet people still dismiss truth with the oversimplified, social accepted African diaspora narrative. Huh? Critics may argue emphasizing our American Indian ancestry undermines possible African roots, however, acknowledging the full spectrum of our ancestry rather than a dogmatic, narrow-minded approach enhances our understanding and respects all aspects of our heritage. <laughs> it is not about replacing one history with another. It's about recognizing the complex reality of our past. And it is not about flaunting us into a homogenous clump with the title African American demonstrated here in the Beavis and Butthead clip. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Hey, remember that big Indian dude in that movie? Mm hmm. He was cool. <laughs> and then he couldn't talk unless he was talking about gum? Yeah. Uh. You know, I think you're not supposed to say Indian either. Oh, no wait, really? Yeah. I think you're supposed to call them African Americans. Say, hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. So, as you heard um, from Chief Siku Hidden Eagle Ajo from Yamasi Nation, um, in this short video of First Coast TV acknowledging Indi indigenous heritage uh, challenges existing governmental and social structures. He also explains how the creek, a.k.a. Seminole, derived from the Yamasi Nation. Hey, boy, ain't no fucking way, boy. Boy, ain't no 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 fucking way, boy. Which refutes YK the truth claim in his book about slaves only being African and being owned by Seminole and sheds a light on the complexities of slavery, turning the five civilized tribes narrative on its head to endorse a divisive victimization Olympics guilt trip. Listen, the term Seminole means runaway and idiot with the phrase, what a maroon, maroon, isolated, red, Negro skin, etc." Bro, what are you talking about, man? So why would a slave own a slave if they are not a part of the colonial system of friendly Indians? slave rebellions for a couple of hundred years on top of that this proves that those runaway slaves were indians and muskogee creek aka yamasi nation what the hell are you talking about who are you talking to what the hell does this have to do with anything tell me what's happening 
Is the Yamasee Nation a federally recognized tribe? Well, that's a twofold question. And um, sometimes people lack the understanding of federal recognition versus, versus federal acknowledgement. Federal acknowledgement is what we do have. And federal acknowledgement comes from various forms, treaties, um, federal court orders, and or the process where you petition the Bureau of Indian Affairs to be actually recognized. Stop. Now, once you receive or you put forth a treaty and, you know, make sure that your tribe is a part of that treaty and or you prove that you have a federal acknowledgement through court documentation, you can now use that in order to be federally recognized. We have federal acknowledgement through federal court documentation. Uh, and, it's, and it's nothing that we put on record or publicized through uh, online documentation and whatnot like that. But we do have federal acknowledgement through federal court system recognizing us as a legitimate tribe based on the standards of what a tribe Hell no, to the no, 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 hell to the no, hell to the no, to the no, 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 hell no, no, to the no, no, hell to the no, no, to the no, 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 hell to the no, no, to the no, 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 so technically, DNA tests face significant challenges, issues of homoplasty. This phenomenon can mislead interpretations of how closely groups are related. In the genetic drift, where DNA changes over generations greatly obscure, true lineage, this is especially significant in mixed race populations. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Like in black American communities that cannot be neatly categorized. So it basically means the ancestral DNA test has limits because DNA changes over generations. Four, minutes. four minutes. Four minutes. Oh, it's four minutes? Okay. Oh, shit. Uh, so basically, this means the ancestral DNA has limits because of the DNA changes uh, generations, making it hard to trace specific heritage accurately. On top of that, huh? In anthropology, ethnicity refers to the identification of a group based on perceived cultural distinctiveness. The distinctiveness is expressed through language, music, values, art, family, life, religion, and other aspects of culture. It has nothing to do with your genetic makeup. Neither does race. This video explains how so uh, much of our ancestry is not represented and all, at all in your DNA test but the precision of these ancestry matches is overrated. Overstated, my man. <laughs> you serious? Hank Greeley, a law professor at Stanford University, has studied this new field. He worries that people don't realize just how many ancestors they actually have. Eight generations ago, both you and I had 256 great, 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 great grandparents. Wait, you're saying that if you go back eight generations, we have 256 great, 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 great grandparents? Yes, it doubles every generation. So you've got two parents. <laughs> to be exact and in each generation dna testing can provide information about only two of them so you could be hell no to the no 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 hell to the no peruvian on your mother's 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 side japanese on your father's 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 side swedish on everything else <laughs> and you'll never know and you'll never know the swedish from the white chromosome or the mitochondrial dna now you've looked at several of these companies that are doing these tests yes. do you think that they explain what you just explained to us no uh, i don't think any of them Stop. this is hank Greeley. he says i'm a stanford law professor i work on ethical 
legal and social issues in biosciences. Let's go down, okay? He responded to me because I asked him, I said, um, is DNA testing a, a scam? Is it a hoax? Is it not real? Or does it just have limitations? And he said, wow, the 60 minutes segment I did about was in 2008. Didn't know that was still alive. Short answer, both then and even more now. It can be done, but it still has major limitations. So for one, DNA testing can be done. As a way of finding, confirming fairly close genetic relatives out to second cousins say, it's quite good. As a way of telling your ethnic roots, it's okay. It's good at telling you if you have ancestry from some of the major continental groups, Europe, East Asia, the Americas, Sub-Saharan Africa. All right. Take YK Jelly the Truth or the lie. DNA test results, for example, do you see the contradicting comparisons between his Ancestry.com DNA test versus his African Ancestry DNA? Notice how you see that on his Ancestry.com test, it says he's 1% Nigerian, whereas on the African Ancestry Y chromosome DNA test, it shows that he's 100% Igbo Nigerian. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? That math ain't mathing. Because shouldn't he and other shouldn't the other test results show that he is at least half Nigerian since his paternal side is a hundred percent instead of it's one percent being out, out, outcome in Umar Johnson's voice. Don't you find that shit suspicious? Bro, what are you talking about, man? So at this point, I honestly want to know why people believe Ancestry DNA tests when they've proven time and time again that they are reach incorrect. They reach incorrect conclusions. Some people think if you mention some things, they might happen. Some people are really fucking stupid. <laughs> Did you ever notice that? How many really stupid people you run into during the day? God damn, there's a lot of stupid bastards walking around. Carry a little pad and pencil with you. You wind up with 30 or 40 names by the end of the day. So, trick bag horoscope. Next slide. Oh, that ends it. Oh, that ends it. Right? That's a, the time, right? That's the time? You got 60 seconds left, technically. Wrap it up, what you want to say. All right, so I wonder what YK has to say in his rebuttal. <laughs> you serious? Is DNA a hoax? And can they trace uh, their lineage to the African or American tribe? Was the title of the debate. Uh, Ling Ling not only did not answer the research question or questions he didn't provide a sound argument uh, to represent himself in the debate space as far as his methodology he had none and you would expect since he brags on his sister supposedly being this uh, PhD or whatever the hell he says she is that them two together would do a much better job at being able to attack the research questions and provide a sound argument. As we saw in this demonstration, from one slide to another, he was unable to stay on topic and provide adequate sources. He didn't even follow the sources. He was just basically reading something behind the screens and showing us something on another screen. Maybe this is something that him and his sister put together. We don't know. But we never got the evidence for it. His presentation was trash. Uh, it was put together horribly. Um, it was argued incorrectly. And it was inconsistent with the debate topic. And therefore, it is people like him that talk all the time and hop on channel to channel, platform to platform, loud, proud, and wrong 
is the reason why he shouldn't ever debate. How the fuck y'all find an African in my fucking family? But y'all ain't find y'all. Shut the fuck up. That don't make sense for one. Listen, y'all don't know what y'all oh, do. Like y'all lied on me because y'all won't even know if that's me. And if y'all can trace that shit back to his me, it's only two people in YouTube that got my information. Yeah, he died by his own genealogy. genealogy. You ain't an Indian, you ain't got a lot of me. Half of this track, best believe you lose a lot of sleep. Probably because you made it up to us honestly. You ain't a Cherokee, no. Nope. You ain't a Chickasaw, no. Nope. You ain't a Blackfoot, no. Nope. Nigga, get lost. You just a fool with low comprehension. So I gotta come through with the henchmen. NAC, Sean P, Shah Sun, Lucky. Don't forget. Jay got no time to play Call that apple slipping with his genealogy Now he's a con and I ain't talking about a singer I'm coming for the top apple leader He ain't a teacher, he's a preacher He can't keep up, so we leave him Yeah, he died by his own genealogy You ain't an Indian, you ain't got a lot of me Half of the track, best believe you lose a lot of sleep Probably because you made it up to us possibly you ain't a Cherokee, no. you ain't a Chickasaw, no. you ain't a Blackfoot, nigga get lost, you just a fool with low comprehension, so I gotta come through with the henchmen, M.A.C., N.A.C., Sean P., Sean P., Shah Sun, Shah Sun, Lucky, don't forget Jay got no time to play, call the apple slipping off his genealogy, now he's a con, O.T.K., TKO. Now he's a con. OTK. Dot. TKO. By genealogy.